I want to introduce these ladies tonight. Like I told you, we are talking about navigating grief, my process for peace. Uh, each and every one of these ladies has a powerful, powerful testimony that they're going to share. And we just going to let the Lord have his way. Right, ladies? Yes. We're, we're going to let him have his right. way. He's already, he, he already has his way. We speak that in the name of Jesus. But let me introduce, because we, you know we don't bring people on the Dr. Don radio show raggedy. We don't bring in making you sit on the plastic couch like grandma used to. We, we make sure you are comfortable. You're not going to be slipping and sliding all over here. But first, we have to introduce Lisa Ricardo. She is a certified life coach, a Christian counselor, an ordained minister, entrepreneur, so many other things. Lisa, welcome to the Dr. Don Radio Show, sister. Great evening, beautiful queens and kings. I, I just love that, honey. If you come on, call us kings and queens. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm. How are you, Lisa? I am doing absolutely great. I'm excited about tonight. Oh, yes. It, it's I'm it's, it's great real. Thing. It's real. And oh, y'all, God already has his way. He are, I'm speaking that and y'all don't know, but we get into prayer before we do this show. Y'all have no idea. Um, and let me also introduce Kim, Miss Kim. She is an author, a speaker, a philanthropist, talk show host. Welcome back to the Dr. Don radio show. Kim, how are you, Kim? I am blessed. I am so honored to be on Dr. Dunn's show once again. Uh, and I'm so honored to sit before these other beautiful royalty uh, ladies here. And I'm excited about what's to take place. Oh, yes. He's going to have his way. And you know what? I just love StreamYard. Y'all ain't got to go nowhere. You ain't got to get in your car. Just sit up, put a T-shirt on and brush your teeth. If you even do that, that's your business. We can't smell your breath. But uh, <laughs> seriously, I just love it. And with gas prices, you know, hey, it is what it is. But right. Tara right. Joseph, welcome yes. Tara Joseph to the show. She is an author, a speaker, founder of A Sister's Touch. Welcome back to the Dr. Don Radio Show. How are you, Tara? I am blessed. Good evening, amazing, wonderful queens and kings, and the amazing Dr. Don and the wonderful panelists. Thank you. You're looking good, me. Tara. You're looking good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, last but not least, Mona Mona Lisa G. Bryant. The G stands for uh, just right. good, good <laughs> mental health advice. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> She always keeps it real. If, if I was ever to take a vacation, she could fill in for me and just keep the show going. Uh, she is a licensed professional counselor and she is the founder of Master Peace, two words, wellness and consulting, PLLC. Welcome back to the show, Mona Lisa. Ladies, how are you doing? Thank you so much. It feels great to be here and thank you for the opportunity. Well, I, I thank you all for sharing. But before we get into this, so I think people should know, um, you know, you all, each of you are, have dealt with the loss of a loved one or loved ones. Um, but let's just just start with you, Lisa, and then Kim. And then I want to hear from you, Mona Lisa, and then you, Tara. Give us uh, just briefly uh, about the death of, of the loved one that, oh. that, you know, that you're or ones that you're dealing with. Well, um, recently, just in April, I lost my aunt, who was like a second mother to me. Mm. But I think the most time that grief really impacted me, because every time grief always catch us off guard and it's almost like um, someone sucker punch you. Mm. Um, 2010, my oldest son, Loan Ricardo, was murdered. Mm. And so I was at work, got the call from the coroner's office, and I was like, the devil is a liar. You must mm. have somebody else's child. And so, and to show you how awesome God is, God's grace is so sufficient. Mm. Because before it happened, I was praying and interceding with Coco brother, and he was asking us to pray for mothers who are getting ready to bury their children that weekend. Mm. I was praying and interceding for mothers who were about to lay their children arrest because that was Mother's Day weekend. Not mm. even knowing that I was praying for myself in the process. Mm. And so the grace was there. And for me to drive from my job to my home to tell my other son that my son had been murdered, it was nothing but the grace of God. I never, I still don't know till today how I got home. Mm. But God, but the one thing I remembered as I drove home was the first thing I said, Father, I forgive them. Oh, my goodness. And mm -hmm. so when you lose something that's so close and what I share with people is don't focus on the loss, focus on the love. Mm -hmm. sometimes it's the loss 
that will take the breath out of you. And you sometimes you lose a part of yourself in the midst of grief. Mm. But God taught me that don't focus on how they died. Mm. Remember the love that you shared and hold mm. fast to that. Because mm. if not, the enemy will use that very thing to take you out. Mm. Oh my goodness. You, Kim. Who 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 tell us? I about would, it. I'm definitely in the Yeah. Well, I have experienced so much a loss over time. You know, it first started with my sister and we were so close and then my father and then my mother. And that was like in my 20s. And it was like three mm-hmm. years apart with each and every one of them from mm-hmm. uh, 23 to 25 to 28. And mm-hmm. then but I, I realized that God was only preparing me for the greater loss that I would experience in my fifties, which was my daughter in 2018, when she took her life to suicide and Mm. no one could ever prepare you for something so traumatic as uh, Lisa was saying, you can lose yourself so easily if you don't know who, whose you are and who you are. And Mm. I definitely had to remember at that point in my life, who I was and who I was, because you can definitely lose yourself. You could end up taking your own life when something Mm. so grave happens to you and in such a way like this and suicide, because no one has, you know, suicide wasn't a part of my lifestyle. It wasn't for me, you know, I had never knew no one to take their lives, you know, or family or friends to take their life. So it was definitely my child, not my child. My child wouldn't do anything like this. It was definitely, definitely a big devastation, but you mm. definitely have to know who you are at that time you have to know who you are you have to stand on that ground and that foundation of prayer and go sh- strictly in and cover yourself get yourself mm. covered by those who know who god is because when you're going through something so traumatic you'll realize that the people who say they know god they don't know him. they don't mm. know him. they like you know him. and i realized that as soon as i went through this start this happened when you know we're calling people reaching out to them they screaming and hollering my daughter was in the car with me my older daughter she just took the phone and she'll call you back and hung up she had to keep people away from me because she saw her mother standing and she saw Mm -hmm. her mother walking through faith and being faithful and she was not to let nobody come in try to shake my ground or break me because I was standing and that's a very hard thing to do when you lost your child that you have held inside of your womb for nine months so Mm -hmm. I I had to really go into prayer and, and, and focus and, and know who, 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 whose child I belong to for God to comfort me and to rock me in his bosom because that's definitely a time in your life that you can lose your mind and you definitely experience all type of traumas every, you, you like we were praying earlier and you're seeing all these things that are manifesting in the atmosphere, mm-hmm. all these evil works. That's the time when the enemy comes to play with you when you're oh, vulnerable. Yes. Be every thing known to man, it, it just started happening at that time. It's like mm-hmm. I was being attacked constantly with all these different spirits, but I was praying them and rebuking them back off. I was rebuking it off. And when you're going through something like this, you have to know how to do that because the mm-hmm. enemy is coming for you because it ain't meant for me to complete what God's assignment that he had for me. He was coming mm-hmm. after me and he was coming after my grandchildren after that, you know, but I had prepared them as I was already prepared. So you mm. definitely have to be covered by the blood of Jesus and definitely know who he is going through such trauma. Yeah, my goodness. Uh, but we're going to talk how to get there. Right, Mona Lisa, because how to get there. Uh, you don't just wake up one day yeah. and and but Tara, you uh, briefly tell us who was the loved one or loved ones. And then you, Mona Lisa, because I think it's important for people to know y'all are not just on here encouraging and all that. You are wa- you you are walking in it, too. Um, so yeah, you Tara and then you yeah. Mona Lisa. So, um, I have lost my oldest son. He was killed in 2012. Mm. Um, and then in 2018 and 19, um, I lost two of my younger sisters literally within six months of each other. Mm. Um, and not to mention me being at a near death experience, um, back in 2009, but my oldest son was killed back in 2012. Um, and you know, as, as the lady was young, the lady it was Elisa saying earlier how she had to deliver the news of losing her son and making it home. Um, I, on the day that my son was killed, um, 
I we were at home earlier, you know, just kind of joking around and I left out to, you know, run some errands and only to be on my way driving back home and to be detoured trying to get to my neighborhood, not knowing that my child was the reason mm -hmm. I was getting detoured, not knowing that my child was laying in the street dying. Um, because of someone else being so uh, reckless in their behavior and having such a disregard for, you know, his life. And so my son was actually killed um, in the backside of our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I was actually on the street where my son actually died and mm -hmm. had to be diverted through um, the neighborhood on the side of ours um, only to get a knock on the door hours later. Um, and I'm waiting for him to come back home because he had came home from college. And so he was going back to school um, that weekend, um, the very weekend that I had his services um, was the weekend he was due to go back to college. And so I had to bury him um, on that same weekend. And so I waited for him to come home um, so we can have our family time before he went back. Uh, and his brothers um, had to hear him actually taking his last breath because mm. he, was, he was actually trying to call his brothers, um, you know, because with the iPhones, you can, you know, touch and whatnot. And so he was trying to uh, phone his brothers. Uh, not sure what he was actually trying to say, but uh, my youngest son actually could just hear him breathing and he didn't know what was happening because he was younger at that time. And so they kept calling mm -hmm. him back. And so I guess maybe my son was just holding the, you know, holding the phone or something. And it just kept like ringing and hanging up. And so uh, to have to navigate through that and then having to um, deal with the loss of two sisters uh, back to back, you know, you, you bury one and then you, you process mm -hmm. that and then you have to bury another sister. Um so that that that's been part of my journey. Mm. Uh, Mona Lisa, you. I'll briefly share. Um, my two biggest losses, I believe, are my parents. Mm. Um, I lost my mother at the age of sixteen to breast cancer, that later um, metastasized to other areas of her body, and then later, I want to say, I believe, four years later, I lost my father mm. as well to cancer um, when I was a college student. Um, it's been a while now. I will say I've moved through it, but uh, it's also very relative that the holidays can be a trigger for mm -hmm. sure, um, especially around this time. So um, for me, it's taking care of myself while mm -hmm. also I'm a therapist. So I'm also supporting others at this time during their griefs and during their pains as well. Uh, but it is a process. It's definitely a process. Um, and it's full of ups and downs. Uh, and I think that's something that we have to keep in mind as we're going through and navigating through experiencing grief. And, and you know, when, when you know, and, and we always hear things and, and let's start with you, Lisa, Kim, Tara, and then uh, Mona Lisa. M moving forward past grief, uh, healing after grief, you're never going to Right. Your every birthday, every color you see that was their favorite color. Every time you see a mother and son, anything can trigger. Um, so you don't ever get over it. So we're going to talk about some insensitive things later um, that people say. But, um, you know, the holidays are coming up. Uh, Tara, I believe you said on the last show, wasn't uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas your son's favorite holiday? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So that that's this time of the year gets to be like really tough for me. Um, and in that first year that I lost my son, um, it was it was hard. I was I was really numb. And I think that's when the grief actually set in for me was during that first year after um, he passed away, you know, after he was killed. Um, and I was very uh, numb and I actually slept through Christmas um, mm -hmm. and my other children suffered because <clears throat> it was almost as if they didn't exist because of the pain that I was feeling that I just, it, it just didn't seem real that we were celebrating Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I 
felt like, how can I celebrate and he's not here? I didn't want to feel like I was having a happy time, but at the same time, my other children were still there and I still had to function. And so that's a part of the grief process that we talk about that, you know, with functioning past, you know, that moment in those times when you do have other children and other family members that you have to take care of in the process of that. Mm -hmm. Lisa, you and then Kim, Mona, Lisa, how are you all? Because there's somebody who's watching or who will watch when I upload this video or who's listening right now online or through the app who is trying to get through the holidays. Um, they're trying to make it. How are they going to make it through the holidays? Um, how are you all navigating, especially with the holidays coming up? I hope me and my son, Robert, we and, the, and my son, he has three daughters. Mm. And so we talk about, and so that helps ease the pain. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about, we don't talk about him as if he's present, but we honor his memories. Mm. And so like say for my daughter was saying, well, mom, let's cook my daddy's favorite meal. You know, mm. um, doing because his birthday is December the fifth, and mm. so they'll say, "Well, let's throw some up to heaven." Mm. You know, they'll say, "Well, wine." And so for me, you know, if I'm having a moment, if I'm thinking about wine, I may go get his favorite smoothie. I say this to you, son, or I may hear his song. You know, wipe me down, and I'm in the car and I'm jamming to the beat. And so then there's the other thing that I do. Um, you know, if I'm in church. My sons used to watch me when I'm in church, and they would say, "Well, my, you be doing this little dance like you be in your own little zone." So yeah. I do those things, and I hold fast to that. And if I one thing about grief, they say that's five stages of grief, but you have to be careful because grief comes in waves, and you never know when the wave is going to hit you. But I think the hardest part is the depression, mm -hmm. and you grief will take you farther than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful and take care of yourself. So if you see that part where you're withdrawing, you're crying and all this, you're going to have to find you a focal point. And what I tell people is look at the, the picture, but don't stare at it. Because mm -hmm. when you stare at it, you begin to think about what happened to that person when they transitioned. So I'll glance at the picture, but I don't stare at it because I don't want to take me to depression where I'm beginning to not eat. I'm, I'm My pressure is being risen. Um, I'm not I'm emotionally eating. And so I'm creating another problem. So a part of me is dying. And as she said that when she lost her child, um, the other children didn't exist. And that was one of the things God told me was mm -hmm. to release the prisoners to my pain. Wow. That meant that I had forgot about other people existed because my son had died. Yeah. But they also were grieving too. And so God said, bring them in. So my grandson would do things that would remind me of my son. And he was only 15 months old when his uncle died. Mm -hmm. So we, we would talk about it and say, oh, look at wine. So we see reflections of him through his, yeah. his nephew and his daughters. And so we hold fast to those things. So can I encourage someone um, and I pray that people are careful of how people treat people during the holiday season, yes. what yes. they say, because sometimes people, oh, you should be over that. Oh, you're crying about that. Or they talk about like, if I mention that person's name, you're going to lose your mind. Mm. Mm -hmm. That person is a, still a part of them. Yeah. Don't treat them as if they never existed. That's be right. Careful, because sometimes a person just needs your presence. They don't mm. need you to say, oh, girl, here go Lisa again. She crying about wine. Oh, mm. Out of that person's life. You know, I know wine would have loved to have some Mexican cornbread. I know that. And so I hold fast to those memories and I honor those. Mm. You, Kim, that's good. You, Kim, and then you, Mona Lisa, how how are you navigating through the holidays? I'll say I try my best not to be the Debbie Downer. And because I guess I've never have been, I've never made that my practice. You know, I always give God a praise no matter what it is, even in my at my worst, even though that was my worst time of my life, I was still praising God. And I just thank God for giving that in me. But I had a praying mother. So mm. I came up in a church and I knew the way how to navigate myself through these hard times, being that I had already been in practice of it. So I never was a David Downer. When I cried, I cried with me and God. Nobody really seen me cry, you know, except my daughter. I can remember us riding in the car every time we went somewhere, we would get lost. Yeah. And I was like, you know, we're not good for each other because <laughs> she's just as crazy as I was. We couldn't navigate direction. We don't even realize where we were. And my son, you know, he, 
tried to work himself to death to just bury that hurt and pain and that. And then my daughter had two children, but she was a married woman. So the father had access to the children. So that didn't mean I don't have them all the time, you know, but my main was concerned at that time was my grandchildren. So I was like, the devil's going to come for you. You be prepared and you rebuke him. I was, I was so busy trying to teach them how to fight the enemy because I know mm -hmm. they were the weaker link. It wasn't me. It was my, it was my grandchildren. So I was preparing them for the enemy. Me. And I was, you know, just studied praising God and just getting him the glory because I found out well, why I'm giving him the glory. He was constantly strengthening me. It's like the day that my daughter killed herself, as I was calling people, one of my friends, good friends, she told me she was about to kill herself. So I knew mm. it was only the glory of God. She like, she just saved my life. I was about to take my life. So, you know, mm. things happened. I knew right then I said, God, this was not in vain. You got something else for me to, to do. This is an extension of my work that I need to be out here doing after being an advocate for those who are suicidal. And mm. uh, that's what I've been doing. And I found out that in your ministry, when you are working, I'm also a nun profit as well for women coming from us uh, uh drug and alcohol recovery, sex trafficking, domestic violence, misplaced vets, and homelessness. Most of those women who come from those type of settings are already suicidal. So I'm used mm -hmm. to dealing with that type of people. But did I see suicide with my daughter? No, I did not. But mm -hmm. navigating, you know, the first two Christmases for me were the worst. You know, they were the worst. The Christmas and the New Year's, uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and the New Year, those were the, fir the first two years. Those were my worst years. But I made a, a, a oath to God, you know, like, God, I'm going to fight my way through this. I'm going to keep walking in spite of. Believe it or not, on the third day, I was at an event after my daughter lost her life. I was crazy. It was gray outside. I couldn't see clearly. Was I in my right mind? No, but I was still moving because I made the oath to God, no matter what I go through, that I'm going to fight. So I'm mm. that person that does try to push people to keep on moving, even in their hurt and pain, because I can go back and look at everything I was doing on my social media. And I know every day that I was crazy. I can look at my pictures and I know I wasn't there. I wasn't myself, but did I get stagnant and lay down and die? No, I did not. I kept moving. So I mm. would encourage people to keep on living your life because when once a person has passed on, they're happy. They're not suffering. Like we're still here suffering. They didn't, they didn't went over to the, other side of happiness and peace and, and enjoyment so we must stay here and fight the good fight because we're the ones still in bound in hell so we must stay here and fight the good fight until we get there and encourage others on how to practice their faith because loss is to me is a faith walk it's a mm. faith walk on how are we going to get through this? How are you going to oh show people who are watching you when you're saying you out here doing the work of God? You can't be mm. laying down, dying and saying that you want to go as warriors and you falling out, out acting a fool. So I believe in practices what you preach. I believe in the word of God. So I stand by it. And in my walk, I practice it in every format that I can. That's how I navigate my way through. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I, I like that each of you said each of you something different. Lisa, you said, I got to put the picture up for some right. people. They may want to see the picture. Um, Tara, for some, they may right. want to de decorate the tree anyway with their. Yeah. It's whatever is for you that helps right. you get through, right? Um, right. And Mona Lee for you here being That's a, right. a therapist, mental health professional. And I'm going to tell you something. I referred somebody to you, Mona Lisa. And they called your office and this is nothing <laughs> bad. What I'm about to say, they said, oh, well, Mona Lisa's not here for the month or, or whatever. She's taking the month off. Uh, that's what they told me. Is that true? What happened? Yeah. So yeah. and I said, well, she has posted that she lost her, you know, so that she needs her time. But you being a mental health professional, you lift others. You have to take that time. <laughs> so yeah. seriously. And that's what she told me. And I, I was like, well, I can't control that. You know, I, I, I yeah. wish Mona Lisa was there. I can't, you know, but she's got to take her time. So Mona Lisa, how do you navigate? We know you take your me time, but what else do you do? Um. And going based on what you said, if you have a client you want to refer to me, let me know directly because I'm not taking new clients. <laughs> Usually if it's clients who are referred to me and if it's grief, because that's one of my specialties, okay. I really enjoy working with that population. Let me know directly and I'll, I'll definitely see them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for me, it's it's the opposite of Kimberly. Mm. So I am a Debbie Downer during the holidays, very much aware of it, but I mm -hmm. embrace it. Um, so 
I, I kind of know when I need to be by myself. I know when I feel comfortable being around others. And I've just accepted that 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 may I don't know how long it may be, but that is my reality um, during the winter months, because that's when I lost my parents mm-hmm. um, and I've accepted it. But navigating through and it, it, it's a process because like Lisa said, it's full of ups and downs. Even though you have the stages of grief, it doesn't mean that uh, one day you're acceptance and then you're just fine. No, one day you can feel like you're at the last stage, which is acceptance. And then a day later, it's depression okay. or it's still shock. So it, it's, it's, I want to say I'm probably over 15 years now of, losing my mother and um, sometimes it feels like it's just yesterday Mm -hmm. but I have a huge picture of her in my room on my nightstand and I I see it every day now could I say that I would have been comfortable looking at that picture um, when she passed away no but today I thoroughly embrace it Um, yesterday I went to HEB I seen red poinsettias that's my mom's favorite plant. I bought mm-hmm. one and I put it in my living room. So mm-hmm. for me, it's um, it's gracing her her spirit being here, and but also recognizing that around this time, I need to know when I can be around others and when I need to be on my couch. <laughs> but but you know what? And, and you know, Kim said Debbie Downer <laughs> and, and and that. But let me tell you, it's okay. Absolutely, I'm grieving. Mm-hmm. Now, if Kim yeah. calls it Debbie Downer, it's Debbie Downer. It but is. for some, I'm grieving. Mm-hmm. Why don't you be there for me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm on. And then now, let's get into the insensitive things people say and do. Mm-hmm. Some people mean well, and we've talked about this before. I'm a Christian. I love the Lord, but this is not the time for you to talk about where one door closes, a window opens. <laughs> Your little speech, okay? And, and let's be real. We right. Can mean well. Mm-hmm. But let's start with you, Lisa, and then you, Tara, uh, Kim, and Mona Lisa. What are things that people have said that they mean well, but they're just not helping? So people know, because the holiday's coming up, Cousin JJ coming over. <laughs> this is what you don't say, Cousin JJ. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Right. I think <laughs> we, we have, as a, as a people, we have not been taught what to say. Mm. And sometimes we have to be careful because we can be insult to injury. Okay. So saying to someone that they don't have to suffer anymore, they're in a better place. What may be a cliche is not comforting. Mm. Um, and, and when they talked about Kim and Mona Lisa talked <laughs> about their grief, it's really the face of grief when you're going through that. Because Mona Lisa took was wisdom her not to operate in her profession and she pulled away and grieve. Some mm-hmm. people would lead while bleeding and mm-hmm. still hurt other people. Mm-hmm. So using wisdom. So it's the time, it's the holiday time. Mm-hmm. And so it, be very careful what you say to people saying that, oh my God, you still grieving? It's been 10 years. Oh, Enough. oh girl. Oh girl, don't invite her. Because some people, you have to, another thing is that some people feel like if they be around us who have lost children or family members, they're going to lose something too, as if we're contagious. Like, Oh, you know, really? Oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's happened. And so, um, wow. so be very careful what you say to people. I'm trying to be good right about now. It's, say it, say it. This show is no judgment, just realness. I mean, I'm serious. Some people will say things that are piss you off. Someone told me, you know, they said, um, I, um, I was crying. They said, you're not happy. I said, why would I be happy that my child is gone? Mm-hmm. You know, why would I be smiling that my right. son was murdered or, you know, um, he didn't have to suffer while well, he was murdered. Mm-hmm. Someone shot him and took his life. And then so someone else said, well, this person, they're, they're, what, they're not saving. Their son was shot, was shot 15 times and he didn't die. But you're the minister. What? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And so you have to really, and so I'm going to say this, when you're going through grief, you have to guard your heart because people will say things. And and so then you also have to have a safe place to grieve. So I know that during the holiday season, I know who I can be around and I know who I need to if I need to be by myself and have my moment, I have my moment. And if I'm having a good day, I'm not going to let someone take me where I'm not. So I remember a sister called and I said, I'm doing well. She said, you're doing well. I said, I am doing well. So sometimes people ex- want you to express the grief in their ma- in their manner. Yes. Don't let people put their their problem on you. 
like how she should grieve, but you should post more about your son. You should be crying and you should be, no, I, I, this is the way God has allowed me to. And one of the things that God told me was, and this is my book, it's called Don't Let Grief Kill You. Because a part of me was dying while I was grieving because I was not being a good steward over my body. I began to emotionally eat. So you have to be very careful when you're grieving that you don't lose yourself because a part of you die. Mm. But you got to allow God I'm going to say this and I'm going to stop. David, when his son died, David arose. Mm. He cleansed himself. He worshiped God and he ate. When you lose something, you're at your lowest place. It's time for you to rise up. Yes. I mean, accept what it is. Mm -hmm. You need to worship God because when you worship God, you're releasing it off of you and saying, God, you're sovereign because you're dealing with the bargaining. Like, what if, why my child? Why did this have to happen? But you're bargaining with God and then you have to get to the place of acceptance. And so accepting what God allowed and saying, God, I don't understand it, but I know that you're sovereign and you mm -hmm. promised to see me through. And when David began to release, began to worship God, God gave him strength in the midst of the battle. So as we all have lost, mm. lost heart there. You, you know what, Lisa, as you said that, forgive me, uh, and this just came to me. Y'all know I make mistakes on the radio all the time. I just <laughs> thought about this and it's no judgment, just realness. Absolutely. Lisa, you touched on something, so I've been convicted. Let me say, make this statement. Okay, y'all. You giving your little phrase, one door opens, the window opens, and all, in your little phrases, and that's that's great. That's all we know. That's why we're having this show. So, you know, something else to say. <laughs> so let me say that scripture is all, you know, so that's all you want to quote. That's fine. But we're giving you something else to say, because that may not be effective in the situation. So let me say that. And I have to say that. Okay. But you know what? Let me say this. When someone lose someone, they don't need you to beat them with scripture. And, and that's all I want to say, because we're church. Christians are listening. Some non-Christians listening. I don't know. But you, you want to quote a scripture, but. Lisa I just said scripture. that's all we know. Now you know something else. That's why we're having this show. No, I didn't quote a scripture. No, I'm it's talking just, about people in general. Well, I see, who I want to quote you. a scripture to people who are I, dealing I, one with One of my it. friends, she would tell you, Dr. Roberta, when she lost her grandson, I told her, I said, your, your son does not need the preacher. He yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. That person needs you to be present. I'm not Minister Lisa. That was my son. That was a part of me. If it only was a second. I don't need you to Bible beat me. I just yeah, need yeah. your presence. Yeah, and, and I'm talking to the audience. I'm telling yeah, the audience you. that, oh, not yeah. you. Oh yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. So I'm talking to the about. audience who's listening. I, that's what I meant, Lisa. Sorry, yeah. not about you. Oh, oh, I got you. Yeah, oh, yeah, you. yeah. But um, and I want to, you know, uh, let let's switch gears with this different questioning, and I'll start with you, Tara, with that. Uh, you know, grief comes in many forms. What is it for you, Tara? So for me, grief, um, you know, as I said it before, was, was the holiday part, but I have taken it to where um, I turn my, what I felt on the inside, I've, I've turned that around. Um, and for me, I had to get uh, spiritual counseling as well. So it's natural counseling because it was so many emotions that I felt that I didn't know how to process it because um, in, in losing, you know, my grandparents prior to that, but to lose a child was so heart-wrenching and such a gut punch that it was a great, you know, it was something I never felt before. Mm. And so um, the amazing thing that came out of losing my son is that um, I have two nephews that are um, named after my son. And so my niece and my brother, my brother named one of his sons uh, after my son. And then my niece named uh, one of her sons after my son, which they both asked, you know, they wanted to make sure I wouldn't have any triggers. And so um, in losing him, um, as Lisa was saying, sometimes when people say some things in the trigger, so I take those moments when I feel sad, mm -hmm. um, when I feel um, I'm missing him and I reflect on his life. And so mm -hmm. I have to take myself 
through those steps. I've had to, I've been through those five stages and probably been through it five, 10, 12, 50 times over. Um, and it's just a process where sometimes, you know, you have to, um, I have to tell myself, you can get through this. You, you got this, press through, get through, because other people have watched me in the process. And I, I remember at my son's funeral, um, I was sitting on the front row and I just hear this crying and this sniffing. And it was just like really loud behind me. And so it it just stopped me from crying. And my sister, uh, who subsequently is one of my sisters that passed away, was one of his godmothers. And so she was just crying, 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 crying. And so in the process of, of my grieving and everything, um, I began to have to console people, you know, mm -hmm. with losing my son and what he has meant to other people. So even to this day, I still still don't remember everybody that was there but even to this day when people would tell me something about they remember at his service mm -hmm. or if i post something um i'll get a message from somebody and so all of those things have helped me in my grieving process to where now um i think it was lisa that was saying how she can celebrate her son mm -hmm. where my son one of the things he loved was sweet potato pie mm -hmm as well so as my sister, because I, I bake. And so I made a sweet potato pie um, last week. And so I just began to smile thinking about my son and my sister of how they loved my sweet potato pie. And so then um, I kind of gave it out to some people. And I was like, oh my gosh, can I get some more? And so I've literally made like four pies within the last um, week. And so that helps me with my process because yeah. I think about how my son would encourage me. And he was like my biggest cheerleader mm -hmm. uh you know with encouraging me to do stuff and so um as one of the other ladies said the insensitive things that people say you know uh, because he was my oldest um and so i remember someone telling me well you know god doesn't make a mistake and you know he don't have to suffer through the things that's happening in this world and you know maybe you were too focused on him and you know mm. god had to move him out the way to you know to, and i'm yeah. like wait a minute push pause Wow. Because I, you know, if anyone know me with my children, um, I am a mom first. I'm a champion for my children. I'm a champion for other people's children, you know, being an educator. So yeah, yeah. I, I champion for that. And so, um, you know, I don't put one over the other, but that was just the whole process of, of navigating something I had never been through before. And so I was like, okay, how do we do this? What does that look like? And when you don't know, um, who to turn to, or when you think this particular person is there to support you. Um, I remember someone saying something very, so insensitive. And I said, let me tell you something. You're stressing about a light bill or a man. Uh. Honey, you have not had to put a child in a coffin. Okay. You have not had to go in the courtroom and look at the people who have killed your child and not want to jump over the bench. And then uh. you handcuffs. When you've gone through that, then you come and talk to me. OK, yeah. and yeah. so and, and people don't understand. And I know Lisa can relate to this. As I said, when your child, when your child have been killed and you, you have to deal with that or some, you know, uh, part of the thing with my son. And, and I still have to go back to court because it was multiple people involved um, to where one of the persons um, is in jail. And so one of the other persons was actually killed. And someone was like, well, maybe that was just the justice. I'm like, ah. Mm -mm. Uh -huh, that ain't that's not it you know and it kind of triggers you and take you back but um you have to keep pressing and you, you yeah. have to be rooted in god you yeah. have to have a foundation because otherwise you will crack because i, I was at a suicide point as well so yeah. but god i i i want to thank you ladies for uh because this is such an important topic for being patient with each other as you talk through you know i i some shows i have to move us on some shows like this just talk right let let you you, you got to share kim you i want you to share an insensitive thing maybe someone has said to you and then mona lisa is we in this question i want you to say to and give us things we should say to people things that will help because a lot of people are going to be around loved ones who have lost someone or friends and sometimes it's uncomfortable for people and they don't know what to say but uh kim you 
An insensitive thing someone has said to you. Well, I want to say some things they said to me insensitive. I got about three insensitive things. <laughs> and it was like, uh, why did you have a gun? My daughter, I didn't tell y'all that part. Mm -hmm. My daughter killed herself with my gun. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back again to the word. As I said, if you don't know who God is and who you are, you can lose your mind because my daughter killed herself with my gun. So you mm -hmm. have to be grounded in the word and in God. You know, some people are like, don't, don't Bible, book, but you do need to know who you are and whose you are. When something like that happened and the child take oh, yeah. their life with your gun. So mm -hmm. that's why I say you have to be faithful. And I am a faithful person. I believe in the word because I know the word is going to get you where you need to be. I don't care what nobody say. I, I stand firm on that. You know, I don't go across that, but I was going to say two people to, I had about three people said something about the gun, but two of those people had a loss. One mm -hmm. of the people said, um, you still going through that? It was six months into my daughter's death. He lost his wife after that. Somebody else said, oh, will you get a gun again? They lost their son after that. Mm. I go and say, touch not my anointing. I'm just telling people the word because God is real. Mm. So you have to watch your mouth. But I had somebody else say that, but they apologized. The other two people did apologize. Those two people that, that went through that loss, neither one of them apologized. God be my witness, I'm telling you. We have mm. to watch our tongue because you don't know what God got in store for you. You don't sit up and try to shut nobody down when they're already hurting and they already lost their children. You don't do that or lost their child. Because like uh, all the sisters have, say, have said, that is a, especially with your child, that's mm. the lowest blow that you can go. And then suicide at that, you're already at a devastating point in your life. You already at a low. And then I know your child used your gun to kill themselves. You're already at a low. You don't need nobody coming to you with a punching bag and trying to make jokes or making assumptions because mm -hmm. people assume everything when you lose somebody in, in, in tragedy. We, mm -hmm. People always got their mouth open. But I always tell them, you know, be careful because wait your turn. So mm -hmm. we have to be careful with our mouth and, and the things that we say. To attack people because if you ain't never experienced something, wait your turn because ain't nothing new under the sun and it can happen to you at any moment. We all going to mm -hmm. have something that we go through in life. And as mm -hmm. I, like the young lady was saying, my daughter was my youngest child. She was 30. She had just turned 30 to, in, in January and took her life in February on her anniversary day because she was married. Mm -hmm. And that's the day she decided to take her life. And, uh, I, I, the good things I can remember good about her is because we traveled all over the world together. We did so many things together. And I know the reason behind it now that God allowed me. She was a singer. I helped her with her music. She helped me to write three of my books. She would proofread my stuff and help me. Mom, this needs to be said like this. You know, she was, all of my children are good children, but that was my most humble child. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter the type of child it is that God can take them. She was a good girl. She was an humble child. But that spirit of depression overtook her so do i rebuke depression at all times yes i do do i believe in the word of god yes i do because i know that god does not give us the spirit of depression and fear we you have to be grown in that word when you're going through things like this so it does not have to linger you from years to years and years do i hurt yes do I see memories of my daughter and it's something that's triggered me? Yes. But anytime that I start going to that dark spot, I always call, call on the Lord's name and he redeems me from it. This, this is the truth. But that's my spiritual walk. And I don't expect everybody to be faith, faithful as I am, but that's just my spiritual walk. That works for me. Now, yeah. some people might need medication or whatever it takes them to get through their hurt and their pain. Whatever you need, that's what you do. But what works for me, I didn't have to go to... I, I did go to counseling at Bethel's church one day because they, they, my brother go there and my daughter went there. So they told me to come when I went in there that one day to go to counseling, everybody talked about their situation. And I even tell them that to this day, why I didn't come back. When I talked about my situation, the first thing I like, Oh no, nobody say nothing. Nobody. Okay. Don't leave with the room. Y'all sign a disclosure. I didn't feel like they were faithful. Like I was, I don't mm. want to be in a, a setting that I'm feeling like I'm being drawn in. I need to know that you're on the same level of past where I am with your faith in order for me to sit in your circle when I'm hurting like that. So I had to go around people that I knew who really knew who God was. Because I learned that day that the people who said they knew who God was, they didn't know who God was. Mm. I learned that because I had nobody to call on but the Lord. Do you understand? 
Yeah. I had to call on him because, and I had friends that was a pastor that, you know, that believed and got me around a prayer warrior, a woman that believed I had to put myself around people who were structured and really know who the Lord was and believed because people feel like you're doomed when your child commits suicide. They'll come mm -hmm. to you like you in doom, hell and damnation, like this sister was saying, like you're jinky or something going to happen to them. Or contagious. That's how they be coming to you and you be looking at them like, and I'd be rebuking them. Yeah, and I rebuked them right in their face. I I'm know you do. A lie. <laughs> I, 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 I don't yeah. sit up there. I don't. I don't wait. For I don't tell them yeah. behind their back. I talk to them in their face right. because God ain't gave me the spirit of fear. Don't come to me with no nonsense and try to shake my faith because I'm going to shake yours for you. You're not going to yeah. shake my faith because I know what God gave me and I know that I can go on. I know that he's going to move me over this hill in this mountain like he's done everybody. I am not going to stay in bondage. Yeah. And I like that each of you are sharing what is what is best for you. What is your process? Um <laughs> And, right. and there's no judgment here. Right. Mona Lisa, tell what what should people do? What can can because there's somebody who's gonna go to somebody's house for the holidays. Some people are uncomfortable. People don't know what to say. They mean well. Give give people some some things they should say and do. Healthy things to help that individual dealing with grief. Absolutely. Um, like Lisa, I do believe that. Um, many people don't know what to say, and mm. essentially, we haven't be, been taught what to say. Yeah, um, yeah. A, a lot of things related to grief either get swept under the rug of their, or there's emotions there, and they aren't discussed as a family. Mm. Um, I think that some things to say is to show support. Let that person know that you are there for them. Um, ask them what do they need. Mm. Sometimes, what we believe that a person needs is not what they need. Um, they may need someone to talk to on the phone, maybe not someone showing up to their house every day to see them. Yeah. Um, or they may need someone to cook a meal for them Yeah. Uh, and maybe don't know how to ask. So it, it's important to ask that individual what they need and let them know that they, that you are there to support them through that trying time. I, I like that you said, what do you need? Not what you think they need. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you need? Because maybe it's not even a meal. Rick Warren, uh, who wrote The Purpose Driven Life, his son, Matthew, committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And he shares that. And he said, and he tells pastors, show up and shut up. Just show up and shut up. That's what he tells people. When somebody's grieving, he said, because the most thing, the, the best thing for him and his wife at that time, people just hugged him. And they just were there. They were just present. But show up and shut up. Um and that that's what he said, yes, yeah. um, you know, yeah. But but let, let's I want to start with you, Lisa, with this question, because um, and I just love the real conversation that we're having here because it's no judgment, just realness. Um, and again, I, I love the space we're in allowing each other to talk. It, it's you know, we can't feel rushed, especially with something like this, because we don't know y'all who's going to watch the replay, who's going to watch it on YouTube. We don't know. Um but people are suffering in silence. Lisa, how, what do we do for somebody who you clearly know is grieving? And I want to hear from all of you, whether personally or, or in your professions dealing with this. So, they just won't get help. They're not getting help. They're depressed. They, they just, you try to, they just won't get help. And you see them going further and further. You can't make them go to therapy. You can't make them go to counseling. What do you do? Well, um, one of the things I tell people is that feel the feeling or choose the behavior. Mm. Your feelings are valid. Yes, you're hurting. It's painful. But if you're dealing with depression and I ask them, I said, have you eaten? Mm. I don't recommend because I know they don't have an appetite mm. or you're not able to sleep. I recommend melatonin. I would tell them to get a meal replacement drink because you do need your strength. Um, and I tell them, you know, most of the time I just show up and be a listening ear. And just like Mona Lisa say, what do you need? Because a lot of times when people do transition are going through the holiday, people say, if you need anything, call me. Mm. And so call. Or they just begin to start fading away. And then if you, if you fix my crown while I'm going through this, you ain't got to tell somebody what I'm going through. So yeah, if I yeah, yeah. Person, I'm having a moment. Girl, don't call somebody else. Say, girl, Lisa having the hardest time. Girl, she really missing her child. If I, if I if if I feel you a safe place, 
And I said, I'm really just having a hard time. I'm gonna tell you one of my triggers was I had never, I had never looked at my son's death certificate. Mm. And so my daughter-in-law needed it for something. And I began to look over it. And initially when the coroner's office called, they told me that they had, his body was dropped off at the hospital. Mm. Well, this particular day I took and I went to the location that the death certificate Mm. What did I do that for? Mm. As I pull up, I could feel my son's presence. Wow. And I began to bawl. Wow. And, and it's amazing how God uses my youngest son, Rob. He called me and said, Ma, why did you do that? Mm. It wasn't that I needed closure, but I always was wondering because I always was angry because I felt like it, it pissed me off because I felt like they didn't honor my child's life because he was shot. He was with a friend that he thought was his friend, was supposed to be bringing him to a hospital and dropped his body in a parking lot. Jesus. He was not anybody's trash. He was my jewel. Mm. And I felt like to honor him, someone who would give you the shirt off his back. He was mm. inside the door of the hospital. Never did they go in and say, someone is out there that need help. Wow. So that angered me. Yeah. yeah. And wow. so that was a trigger for me, but I needed that. Mm. And so as people are going through in this season, I just want you to be, just be careful how you handle them. You never know what can be someone's breaking point. Oh, yes. So everything that you say, those very insensitive things, not being kind, yeah. or being over, you know, you should be over this by now. Mm. You should be in another place right now. No. Mm. Be careful because one of the things Bishop Jake said, you have to be careful how you deal with someone when they're going through a turn. Mm. The way that you handle me can either cause me to go in further, mm. not come out, or I can come out with my hands up. Mm. I might lose myself if you don't handle me properly. Mm. And some people were like, I can't believe the woman of God, her, her son was murdered. Mm. So can I encourage us to be very careful of how we treat people? You never know what the trigger is. Everybody just needs you to be present. Sometimes, like he said, show up and shut up. Yeah. And ask the Holy Spirit, what can I do to help that person? Oh, say like, that. Oh, you can say, you know, maybe cook a meal. And if you can't cook, let, wait, hold up. Let's stop. Hold up. If you can't cook, say, here's a gift card. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Or, you know, <laughs> can, I, can yeah. I buy this for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I get you this? That way, I'm being a help and not a hindrance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't yeah. want to fix some food and then be like, Lord Jesus, what is this? Yeah. And I was just about to say that, yeah. you know, if you think you, you know, no, just why don't you buy, no, before you cook it, why don't you just buy, get them a gift card and buy them, you know, to the, yeah. yeah. Just just get that gift card and move yeah. on. Cause yeah. Lisa from Louisiana and, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Bad <laughs> No top box mess. She from Louisiana. You hear that accent? Don't don't, don't play around. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But you know, uh, yeah. John mentioned yeah. that you know how when someone you know Tamara when she passed, they said say their name, mm -hmm. say that person's child's name. Yeah, yeah. Say their mother's name. Stop acting like they never existed. Yeah. Like you say, oh Lisa's son. My son's name is Lawan. Mm -hmm. I, I think you all have touched, I mean, if, if by now, right, you all each have touched on some things people can say, things we, we can do and say to be encouraging um, and being sensitive. My goodness, Tasha says, amen. And uh, then she says, you ladies are speaking facts. It, it's real. I want to hear from you, Tara, and then you, Kim, um, briefly. And then I want to go into this, this other question. Um what things helped you? What things were supportive for you? Um, and then Mona Lisa, I want to start a different, uh, I have another question I want to go into, but go ahead, you Tara, and then you Kim. Uh, yeah, so, and first, I just really have to thank all of the ladies oh, on yeah. the panel tonight, because listen, just when you think you've gone through something and to hear, um, you all sharing your amazing testimonies and just your strength and journey is definitely a blessing. Um, so the things that have helped me is, of course, understanding my circle, 
um, the important thing is, um, and it's, is it Mona Lisa? That's the therapist yes. is understanding that. And this is not to slight anyone because I know we have different cultures, nationalities that will tune in, but as African Americans for years, and especially if you've grown up in a church, um, that, you know, we don't go to counseling. You just pray about it. You just do this and do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been in the church all my life. My dad, you know, was a uh, pastor, sister, all of that. But all of those prayers did not help me at the time because I had to know God for myself. Mm -hmm. And I actually felt guilty, like, um, because of my sins, you know, because, mm. you know, we're taught stuff in church, you know, that because of my sins that, you know, my son died was because of something I did. And so I had to seek God for myself. Um, I had, as I said before, I had to go to counseling. My children and I, we went to counseling. We went individually and we went as a family. And so we got professional counseling. But oh, we also yes. Got, we also got spiritual counseling because I ha we, we had to have that balance. Whatever you need to do yeah whatever it is and so i had to have my kumbaya on. i Come had to on. sit by yeah. the water you know and <laughs> and those people who would say those insensitive things i had to stop and say baby listen god is god okay <laughs> don't ever forget that because anybody that knows me they know my my phrase is honey but god and so in those moments when i wanted to give up in those moments when you know i sent out a text message because i was ready to commit suicide because it was just so much um and just all of the insensitive things and just the you know the anger and frustration that i felt you know with their dad because i felt like he didn't do certain things and so I even had to forgive him. Hmm. And that's something to share with you ladies is forgiving ourselves. And we're not holding a torch of what happened with our loved ones, whether it was our child, our parents, siblings, we have to forgive ourselves. And so I had to forgive myself. And that was a hard thing because I was carrying the burden of as if it was my fault that my son was killed and I said well maybe if I didn't live here I thought I lived in a good area to where you know my children didn't have to walk outside and mm -hmm. see certain things I thought they were in a good school district and so God had to say I'm God <laughs> who are you I'm I'm God mm -hmm. you know but he had to prepare me for the journey to be able to sit on this panel and talk today. He had to prepare me to get to a place when I have had to comfort mm -hmm. my mother in losing her child, my mm -hmm. sister, yeah. and then another child. When I had a friend to lose both of her children, when I had to reach out to another lady who lost three of her four children, mm -hmm. you know, and so God has placed me in a in a place where I've had to encounter other people. And one of my very dear friends just recently lost her, um, lost her oldest son. And so I said, God, who, why me? You hmm. know? And so, but, but in the process of all of that and dealing with my grief and, and going through that process, God had to build me up for the people that I would have to encounter to show them that this is not the end that you can't give up and stop right here because then it will overtake you, will consume you. And, and as the, uh, was it Mona Lisa, um, said earlier, um, you know, the depression to try to set in, you know? And so, uh, I can attest that I was an em emotional eater and I, I still kind of do it. That's why I'm fluffy y'all, but, um, God working on me with that, but, hey. uh, and I had to get through that. Yeah. And so, uh, it, it was a process. And so you have to understand who you are and the place that God have you to be and go through that process and not fight the process because mm. you know, that takes you to a different place and know that even when there's family, even if it's little Bobby or Susie or Kelly or to whoever it is, they may have been in your life since you were born, since you were in elementary school. Sometimes we have those boundaries, creating those boundaries, those healthy boundaries and knowing that we family, we friends or whatever, but I can't allow you to be in this space because you bring in something negative to me. You bring in something that's, right. that's not positive. So I love you, but I can love you from a distance. That's right. 
That's right. And I want to switch gears here because Tasha uh, has a comment and it's been up. But I let's start with you, Mona Lisa, and then Kim, and then Lisa and Tara. Let's give her some encouragement. Whatever you want to yeah. say, you see her comment. She says, lost my baby sister in 2021. My person, so close to my breaking point. She says, but God. Let, let's, whatever you ladies want to say to encourage her. I think it's a time I would say that, Tasha because I do know you. Oh, oh. Uh, Mona sorry, Lisa, please. Mona Lisa, Kim, Lisa, and uh, Tara. I'm sorry, it's 50 of y'all on tonight. So <laughs> <laughs> I would say um, it, it's very important when enduring the loss to stop, um, stop and listen mm. to your body, your spirit, your mental. Um, if you know and you can say that you're at a breaking point, I think it may be beneficial to get help. It is helpful to talk to loved ones, to talk to a support system, but if that <coughs> is working, then there's grief counseling. Um, and then there may be additional resources that need to be utilized to help during that time, depending on the different factors that you're enduring, Tasha. But I will say, um, don't be afraid to get help. A lot of people, especially in the Black community, um, look at therapy and counseling as um, a negative space. Why do I need to talk to someone? Mm. No one can help me or change me. But we do. We show up. Um, it's a process. So I can't say that. And grief is a process. So we don't feel better in three months all the time. Some mm. people do. Some people, it takes years. There is no there is no limit on grief or trauma after, after it's experienced. Hmm. So I will say, do not be afraid to get professional services so that you can have the proper support to help you navigate through um, that hurt. Mm. And Tasha, while we're talking, thank you for that, Mona Lisa. And you, Kim, while Kim is talking, uh, Tasha, I'm actually DMing you the list of reputable, credible therapists and counselors with a proven track record. Uh, so you have it. And that's what I tell people who I know are in grief. I just send them the list. Um, uh, reach out to me if you need it. No, here it is. <laughs> here it is. So, Tasha, I'm about to DM this to you. Uh, go right. ahead, Kim. I say, Tasha, that's my Facebook friend. <laughs> I would say yeah. definitely surround yourself around love, around people, happy people at this time of the year, especially you have to be around people who can uplift you, people who can speak positive things into your life. And as the uh, at least was saying, for sure, go get the help that you need. If you need the counseling, definitely go and get that. Definitely surround yourself with people that have had experiences like you or like your time mm -hmm. listening to us. We went to these similarities. I have children who have lost their siblings. I also have lost a sibling, a mother and a father to cancer like the uh, like Lisa and um be around people, talk to people who have went through the same things that you have went through, listen to their stories and see how they got through it too. That would help you a lot. I said it helped you a lot, but definitely get that counseling if you feel like you're a breaking point because sometimes people need medicine. Sometimes people have to medicate. So don't withdraw, don't withdraw yourself for nothing, but you still, and be into your scripture too, because I'm never going to turn away from the word, you know, matter of time people think about that, be into the word because the word is the comfort. It, we will come for you, but definitely go get that mental help that you need. And like they were saying, it's a stigma in the black community that that we shouldn't, you know, go and see. My daughter was one of those people. I had forced her to go get help for her situation. And she did the one time and she was married and they need to change that law because you're you cannot make them let them get help. They they won't take mm -hmm. them. They'll say, oh, they got to check their self in. Sometimes people are not mentally uh, capacitated to go and check they self in, they won't do it because my daughter would not do it. The first time she listened, and she went and got help. And I'm like, don't let yourself reach this kind of stage no more. Don't go to your rock bottom again. But she wouldn't. You know, she had made up her mind that she didn't want to live again. 
She didn't want to live no more. She, her mind was made up about it. And that's a lot that they need to change. So we are able to make people be able to go and check them in. And that's something that they don't allow you to do. And that's why we're mm -hmm. losing so many people because of that law. And then not only that, she was married. So I didn't have that control and that jurisdiction over her because she had a husband. So those mm -hmm. are some of the things that can lay in the way of that. But I would definitely say do what get that help go get that mental health that you need be surround yourself around positive people people who are speaking into your life people who are telling you about the love things how good the god is because he is and there's so many people you know experiencing loss and there's so many people right now committing suicide i didn't even really know about oh, yeah. it when my daughter did it but it's like a oh, abundance yeah. of it right now so it's like uh it's a whole new territory, you know, for everybody. It's like, it's not so near anymore. And, you know, I had to go in all types of different mindsets for myself when I lost my daughter. You know, I was like, well, God, you took two here. You took three there. You took four there. Mm. You took five there. So I'm not going to complain about, about this one. So that I had to go. I had to put my mind in a different set of mind frame in order to get through that walk. And that's what I done. You know, I did whatever it took to, that was going to work for me, but I'm just going to be honest with you. Scripture worked for me. The Bible really did work for me. So I didn't get the counseling, but I don't, I don't recommend that for people. I always tell them, go get the mental help that you need because the word does not work for everyone. That's right. And I love you said that. And, and thank you for that. Kim Tasha, the list has been sent to you. Um, also, Lisa, uh, you are a Christian counselor, so feel free to DM that to Tasha as well. Uh, Mona Lisa is on that list. Uh, Lisa, what encouragement do you want to give Tasha and then you, Tara? Because I think this is very important. Um, and Damon, he says, come on with that message, sisters. So, yeah. Thank you, Damon. You, Lisa, and then you, Tara. Let's give Tasha. You know, I, I look at Tasha's comment. She says she meant, she says she almost is at her breaking point. And that's one of the things I say, you have to be careful what you say to people as they're going through grief, mm. because I recommend Christ and a counselor. Come on. And there's nothing wrong with going with a counselor because as African-Americans, we don't believe in it, but you need a safe place that's going to give you sound Thank wisdom. You. And so going to, so if you are a parent that lost a child, there is compassionate friends. If you have lost a child, you know, there is bowls plates for children who have, because sometimes oh, they're yes. Old, they get counseling, but they forget about the children who are yes. suffering. Mm -hmm. And so people suffer in silence. And so I want to encourage you. And I thank you, Tasha, for being on here tonight, mm -hmm. but learning your triggers. But as I say to those who mm -hmm. I counsel, focus on the love and not the loss. Remember the love that you share with that person. Amen. Don't be so caught up in the loss because the Bible says, blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. Grief is a process. You're going to go through it. But focus on the love that you share with that person. I focus on the love that the 25 years, because sometimes, and as, you know, um, my sister said, she said, you know, you have to forgive yourself and the person. Sometimes things are not resolved. Sometimes things happen. You know, you didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Forgive that person if they did anything that caused their debt. Forgive yourself because we go through the what if, the blaming ourselves. Forgive yourself. And sometimes we have to forgive the person that's deceased because sometimes you could be a prisoner to someone that's dead because you never apologize. You never had closure. Mm -hmm. You can be free because I remember God told me, he said, it was a time that I had been molested by one of my uncles who was a pastor. Mm -hmm. And God told me that even though he was deceased, I was still a prisoner to the pain because even though he was dead, I was being held hostage to the pain. Mm. So I had to forgive him from my heart and not just from my mouth. Mm. When I forgived him, God released me from the pain. So as a counselor, I want to encourage you, just focus on the love. Get the counseling that you need. It's okay, baby, to go to a counselor. Don't let anyone, because you need someone who's going to give you sound wisdom, who's going to share with you. It's okay. It's okay to grieve. It's a safe place. You need a safe place to grieve. And so I just want to encourage you, there is nothing wrong with talking to counselor. Well, at least she may not be taking anyone right now, but like she said, listen to your body. Sometimes we as Christians, we like, well, in the name of Jesus, I'm here and, and I'm a preacher. I understand. But if your body, if you feel like you're having a breakdown, don't over-spiritualize it and say, I don't need a counselor because you need someone besides 
the pastor because the pastor is not a counselor. You need someone That's right. to help That's you right. and navigate you. You need a psychiatrist. You may need medication. So when I see people who pull away from those things, I've seen people say, you know, they're having chest pains. Oh, I'm going to just care about it. No, get up off your butt. Go get it. Then you have to use practical application. You're having high blood pressure, having these problems. But guess what? Stop eating the pork. So yes. you know, you, but sometimes we assist the devil. Yeah. Yes. It's thing. Hey, hey, yeah. So I yeah. just want to encourage you. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's real. That's real. But, but I want to... But but I want to thank you, Lisa, for sharing. One last thing, uh, with no, go ahead. One thing with counselors, people don't people pay for everything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. When it comes to counselors, they don't want to pay for anything. Yeah, you can have a great wedding and you'll pay everybody else, but the person's gonna pronounce the blessing. You don't want to bless them, but they're gonna be the very source that God is gonna use to be able to bless your life. So invest in yourself and invest in a counselor. It'd be the best thing you'll ever do in your life. That's right. I yeah. love that. Um. Now, let uh, Rosalind says she touched up. She said, "Great conversation. Thank you all for being so transparent." Now, let's say this. Mona Lisa didn't say. <laughs> I said this. Now, Mona Lisa. She said she ain't taking clients right now. But for your Mona Lisa, but for your healthy boundaries, you just tell the Dr. Don I got a referral for you. Okay, don't let us push anything on. Right. <laughs> So I, I'm just saying, I mean, because don't do it because I'm asking you if that's if you cutting it off for the month of November, that's what it is. So, you know, but Lisa, that's good. Except lay off that pork. Don't nobody ask you all that. But nobody talking about that tonight. Uh, me, <laughs> look, y'all, I, I have had somebody out to me. Dr. Dunn, I'd love to come on and do a show about health and fit. Uh, uh -uh. <laughs> we ain't talking about that right now. Okay. Like, uh, but I'm a work in progress. Let's be real about it. Yes. Uh, but let's read uh, Tasha's comment. She said that she does. She says she meant, it was a little typo. She was at her breaking point. She's visited counselors. She stays in the word. Uh, her parents committed to God, so she's no stranger to triggers. Uh, so thank you for that, Tasha. But you have the list just in case, sister. Um so I want to thank you all. Uh, but Tara, did you have some encouragement for Tasha or anyone else? I'm sorry, sister. Listen, I think Lady Lisa said a whole lot. But listen, <laughs> everybody, you know, just just to add on to, you know, she was saying you have people have to be mindful that. Um, oh, let, let, mm, I want to say this as tactful as I can. It. It's no judgment. It's real. This might get hurt. Um. I remember a situation that happened mm -hmm. um, and I remember a person in leadership, not my pastor, but a person in ministry and leadership telling me that, well, how can you do this? And, you know, just because you went through yada, 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 and boom, 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 boom. We have to be mindful of people that we seek counsel from. Okay? Mm. We have whether it's the pastor because that could have been somebody in your family and they just been a pastor and you, you and everybody know the business and all that other stuff and you know you going to this counselor because that's your friend or some da 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 da. We have to be mindful of who we get that counseling from. Yes, um, and being mindful not to tell people mm -hmm. to you know just pray about it because everybody is not grounded in the word. Um, to know what to pray and how to pray and how to seek God. So we always have to be mindful of the wisdom and the knowledge that we give out. And if you don't know what to say, some, just, just don't say anything. You know, send them on to somebody who can help. Uh, yeah. But just be mindful of the words that we say that they not be... Um, I'm not sure if it was Lisa or Mona Lisa that said it, that we're not a trigger, you know, yes, for yes, someone yes. else. Um, and just don't be afraid to um, get the help that you need because we don't ever want to be a prisoner to ourselves, as someone mm -hmm. stated earlier. And so because we could be our own warden in our mind. Mm -hmm. And so uh, let us not be, you know, those wardens in our mind. <laughs> So for Lady Tasha and for all of those that are listening, um, it's okay. And this is in my book as well. It's okay to not be okay. Just don't stay there because there are resources, there are people, there are avenues to help you get from 
you know, point A to point B, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, in losing two sisters, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to try not to be too winded, in losing mm -hmm. two sisters, um, one of my sisters that passed away, um, and this is not to slight her passing to say, oh, well, we knew it was coming. No, mm. because no one really prepares for that. She had been sick. Um, and so we were trying to prepare because the doctors were giving us, you know, different diagnosis, but it still hurt. Yes. It still was a gut punch because mm -hmm. it was like, what? Well, you sure it's not something else you can do? Come on, Lord Jesus. And so with losing my other sister, and I'm going to say this and close up, and losing my other sister, we were just like, nah, Lord, hold on. Because I know I said it. Lord, I know it's somebody else you could have took. Mm. I don't want to be insensitive because she the good one. It's mm. some folks out here doing da 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 da. And you took her. And mm. I got them. And I'm I'm being honest and transparent. Yeah, and yeah. I was I was oh, mad. God. I was hurt. Those are the stages. The Those, news. Yeah. Um, because we were on our way to, to where she was um, because it was my niece's graduation that day. And so my mom had made it to Houston. I said, Mom, you know, I'm going to run to a church. Mm -hmm. It was first Sunday. I'm going to get my communion. Then we're going to get on the road and head to Colleen. And before we could make it to Colleen, mm -hmm. we got the call. Um you know that you know what had happened and my 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 sister's daughter my niece was at um they were at church and my niece had forgot her cap and gown and my sister went back home to get it and so between leaving her church and making home she had an accident and passed away mm -hmm. and so i said god there's people out here drunk driving and they killing up folks and she lord jesus she's trying to get a baby to graduation and so I had to be mindful of what I said because I can't put that on somebody else. I mm. can't put death or, you know, some other kind of harsh something on somebody else to feel like they're not worthy of it or to question God about why you did this and why you took my loved one. And mm. so even in the process of our grieving, we have to be mindful of the words that we put out into the atmosphere uh, regarding ourselves, our loved ones that we've lost or, for you know, for anybody else and that's my transparent moment because I was upset I was hurt yeah. I was you know it was just a lot and it was like Lord we on the way this the baby graduation and you know just all of those things and so in 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 losing two sisters and I was like okay God you know help me to process this because now but but here's the sovereign thing in that something and I've never thought I would actually do was when they were preparing my sister's body. And so I went to the store and I was like, don't y'all put all that clown makeup on my sister. Cause she naturally pretty. Don't, don't do that. And yeah. so I'm gathering her makeup and I said, wait, we got to make sure her hair together. And I made mm -hmm. sure her, you know, hair was together. And so the, the, um, funeral director said, um, and I, we go up there and bring the stuff. And I said, well, sir, this is the stuff I need for you to put on her. You know, I said, don't, don't cover up her dimples you know she don't need all that you know makeup and all that stuff and so he did something that they legally not supposed to do so lord don't don't punish the people but he actually allowed me to help get my sister prepared mm. for her final rest of the moment no, so I had that time to get my sister's hair together he let me do her makeup he let me do her hair i didn't think I could have that kind of strength to do that, yeah. but that helped mm. me with my grieving process. And so mm. I make sure that I celebrate her life yeah. because that's what she will mm. want. Um, I celebrate my other sister's life, celebrate my son's life. So, you know, it's, it's, it's helping in, in that grieving process. So everyone has to go through their process some kind of way. And so um, I had the time to just talk with her. And mm. so I had, you know, God channeled her inner voice into me, like, girl, get it together now. You you got to get it together now. You you out here. Because she was like my, you know, because it was six girls. Yeah. And so I'm the middle child, The you know, the middle child with all of the children all together. And so when everybody else was picking on me, saying I was the insensitive one, she'd be the one saying, y'all leave Tara alone, leave her alone. I'm like... <laughs> Lord, you left me with the rest of my crazy sisters now. 
I'm saying that being, you know, funny, but I'm like, Lord, you left me with the rest of them. I'm like, oh God, who going, you know, team Tara. And so yeah. um, we, we joke about that because they say I'm the sensitive one, but, you know, just being mindful um, that we, you know, in this holiday season, as we wrap it up, that we make sure that, um, we are the light to other people mm -hmm. because they're watching us on our journey of our grief process and how we handle things and how we handle others. So we just have to be mindful of how we carry ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, people see that it's real, but you just don't stay in it and glow, you know, just wallow in it as if there's no hope yeah. for tomorrow. But to get out of it, it is a process. That's Absolutely. why you have counselors like Lisa Absolutely. and and Mona Lisa, right? Um, so I like that you all touched on this. Let me let me read this final comment before I get your final comments. Mm -hmm. Tasha says, this is so helpful, ladies, to know that we all have had this walk. Everything you are saying resonates with every emotion I feel felt. Thank you, God, for this show. I'm just, as you all are talking, I'm really just praising God and I'm thanking God, right? Uh, and I'm, I'm, you all don't know, but let me tell you this. One of the scriptures that I have written down is, Lord, give me the words to comfort the weary. Because I know in the calling, I meet people who are, right? So give me the words to comfort the weary. Yes, God. And and that's what I have to stand on because I have not experienced. I mean, I've had loss, extended family, but in no way have I dealt with the immediate losses that you have had. And I'm not going to pretend I have. Um, so that's why I am glad that you all are sharing um, because we do have to be sensitive. I want to get, as we close this, final comments. Let's start with you, Mona Lisa, Kim, Lisa, and Tara, final comments and then your contact information. Um, my final comments is to, especially during the holiday season, uh, make sure you're taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it's imperative. Um, it can sometimes be challenging, especially when you're having to care for others. But it's a great reminder to remember that we have to first take care of ourselves before we can show up for others. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, be willing to do so. Um, have grace. Give grace to yourself. Mm -hmm. Compassion with yourself as you navigate through any hardships um, or any pains, even if it's not related to grief. Um, just make sure that you're binding to your needs. Um, I am a mental health therapist. I have a group practice um, located in Houston, but we're able to provide services throughout Texas. Uh, we can be found on Google um, or Instagram uh, at masterpiecewellness.org um, or the Instagram is masterpiecewellness and peace is spelled P-E-A-C-E. -E. The concept is I'm hoping that people come um, to master their peace. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if there's anything that's needed from me, any resources, any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can go on our website and um, the question will get to me. And if all of you would do me a favor during while this is going on now or after this, put your contact information in in the uh, comments as well. OK, Le Mona Lisa, you're, you're not cutting people off until 2025. She ain't taking that kind of break. But Mona Lisa, if you have a referral, send it to me. If you're seeing them, you're seeing them. But I, I just I mean, but give me the read. I, I don't want to you know, you have healthy boundaries. Someone's Kathy Tatum says, hello. Hello, my darling, Kathy. We love Kathy. Love, love, love Kathy. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> And Mona Lisa, put it in the uh, comments in the video, please. So, uh, but you, oh, okay. let's get your contact information, uh, Kim, and final comments, Kim, then you, Lisa, and you, Tara. Okay, I would just say, uh, move with love in your heart and mm. peace on your lips. And I would mm. say, let your request be made and known to God. Because if you let him know your request and you make it, he hears you. And you just got to believe that he's going to extend that hand and, and help you through whatever you're experiencing and, and just be faithful. Uh, my social media is www.realwoman, W-O-M-A-N, Real Talk, Instagram. 
Real Woman, Real Talk Facebook group, kmejiacommunitycenter.com website, which is K-M-E-J-I-A.com. That's my nonprofit. And also my website is www.realwomanrealtalk.com. That's my website. So all my social media is Real Woman, Real Talk. Instagram, yeah. Facebook group, and it's also my <laughs> also my website. And I would just say move, always move with the spirit of love and just keep going. Keep your head up while you're grieving and just know that you can break through. You know, God tells us we can go through the valley, but he tells us clearly we can't stay there. So again, I'm going to say if you need the medication, whatever you need for you, you get it. I stand on the word because that's my belief. I don't, that's not nothing I'm telling nobody else to do. You know, everybody got their way of dealing and coping with what they have going on with them. That worked for me. By all means, I ain't telling nobody else to do that because that's not work. My daughter knew the Bible back and forward and she committed suicide. So I'm trying to let you know you have to do what works for you. That works for me. So if you need counseling, go get counseling. If you need medication, go get medication. Some people are bipolar. Some people are unbalanced it's that's different right, things going right. on in your atmosphere so do what works for you i can only tell you what worked for me when the question is asked what worked for me the word worked for me counseling i didn't need the counseling but that don't mean you don't need it so make that's sure right. you hear the pitch clearly do what works for you the word works for me but if you need the counseling you need the medication go and get what you need to get your soul and get your your head straight so you can make it through because we want to see you live. Well, hey, I'm pro-life. I'm about life. Let's live. <laughs> Amen. Now, Mona Le Kim uh, or Mary J. Blige as I'm going to call you tonight. She, she's got, I, she switches around. She's got new hair, Kim. I, Kim is, is the queen, honey. Of, I, I'm always blonde, honey. She, it's always blonde, but I she just decided maybe an afro next week. That's what I'm talking about. Make sure uh, Kim, that you reach out. Mona Lisa said, where can your book be purchased? So, after the video, on my website. In there. You can do oh, that. Oh, okay. Give it the website, quickly. And you too, Lisa. Okay. Yeah. Real Woman, Real Talk again. In my social media group. Inbox me, girl. I got five books. DM her, Mona Lisa. You can tell she's got a lot yeah. going on. She, she got 20 websites, and that's another show. For another <laughs> okay, okay. Multiple streams. Multiple streams. Uh, Lisa, you anyway. can be here. <laughs> one, one of the things I want to say before we close out, one of the things as we, we have to last. All, um, one of the things I want to say to people is that everybody always say be strong for everybody else. Mm. That's a lie. Mm. Because you're suppressing how you feel at the expense of others. You're suppressing and you become a walking volcano. Mm. And so you walk because you never grieve. You never take an account what's going on. Mm. You matter. So during this time that it may be challenging, find you your, your favorite funny shows. Because the Bible says that laughter is like good medicine. So what I do is I find me the craziest shows and have me a good laugh. Yes. My safe place is me being in my theater room and watching a good, funny movie. And that's yes. how I release because I'm a counselor. And so I have to be careful of who I release to because God yes. allows so many leaders to confide in me. And so find the thing that brings you joy, but hold fast to the memories. Love, love is greater than death. Yes. Love never dies. Mm. Focus on the love and not the loss. Don't lose yourself in the process. You matter too. Grieve. I, I just funeralized my aunt who was like a second mom to me. Mm. I had to put aside my personal feelings and eulogize her. Mm. But after I eulogized her, I had to recognize that this was a voice of a mother to me. And so I had to realize Lisa needed to grieve too. You have to also have healthy boundaries and learn how to say no. Sometimes when you're grieving, you don't have to say yes to everything else. Learn to consider yourself. It's okay to be not okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to protect yourself and say no sometimes. That's good. I am Lisa Lady Ricardo. I'm the beauty behind the brand of Know Your Work. It's my brand. Um, I'll put my website information from my heart, Dawn. Thank you. This has been phenomenal being with you beautiful queens. I love y'all to life and those who have been on. If you're going through a time of grief, I pray that the Lord would comfort and strengthen you. Don't let no one judge you or put you in a box and saying, there's a time frame. There is no time frame on grief. You never know when the way mm -hmm. I find those different things. Like for my son's birthday, I may do different things to honor his life. Do the thing that brings you peace, gives you joy, 
don't park yourself in a place of depression. Pull yourself up, worship. Find things that will bring you joy. Hold fast to the memories. Mm. Focus on the love and not the loss. That's right. That's right. Uh, Tracy Tracy says, I missed it. That's right, sister. You you just click on this Facebook Live when we're done. And let's keep Tracy in prayer. And Tracy, I'm not sharing anything private. You shared this on your social media. Her mother is Alzheimer's, and she shared that her mother doesn't remember her. So she put that on social media, and I'm glad she did because we need to know when people are in pain. Sometime if they post, instead of judging, she has shared that. So I prayed for you, Tracy, when I saw that yesterday. And uh, so let's keep Tracy in prayer. I pray you're not offended by I just shared that, but you put it on social media, Tracy. So we're going to lift that up in prayer. Final comments for you uh, from you, Tara. Oh, and Tracy says, thank you. Thank you. We're not violating any any confidentiality here, people. Anything you share private uh, publicly, I'm going to share it because more people praying, the better. And she's not offended. So thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Uh, Tara, final comments from you and then your contact information. You want me to go after Lady Lisa with all of that? Well, then don't. And the show, and, and, and don't. And I can move on. I got an hour to go. All I want to say is, <laughs> Whatever I you want to say. I ditto everything that she just said. She yes. wrapped it up. Um, thank you all for sharing. And, and again, don't be afraid to, to speak out. Don't be afraid to seek and get the help that you need. Um, I just won't be too long because Lady Lisa, she did wrap it up. Um, you can find me on uh, social media at uh, Tara J TJ23 on Instagram. Um, Y'all have to forgive me because this whole social media stuff, I don't care for it too much, but I know it's the way of the world now. Um, Of course, I'm on Facebook as Tara Joseph. uh, Transitioning that uh, to, it will be my business page by the end of the year. Um, You also can reach my website at www.iamtarajay.net and also www.tarajoseph.com. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Absolutely. And Tracy, you're getting such love. Uh, That's why I'm glad when people post their pain sometime, because how would they release it? How would they know? How would we know what they're going through? Um, So let's not judge. People, I am on till 10. Coming up, I will be giving you my five minutes of favor. And you know how we do. We're going to end the show in prayer uh, because that's how we do. I want to thank these beautiful guests. Mona Lisa, wonderful job. Of course, you stay on my referral list. Uh, <laughs> wonderful job. Is And I mess with her with that. Uh, with that <laughs> list. Um, and thank you, Miss Kim, a.k.a. Mary J. Blige. Uh, keep rocking the wigs, honey. I love it. Uh, thank you. We gotta switch up the looks. Sometime that's that's what we have to do. Thank you, thank you Lisa. Know your words, uh, and let me see what you put in the comment here. She said she is the safe place to vent CEO, Lisa Ricardo. Wonderful person. Uh, and Tara, thank you, my darling. Um, thank you, thank you. But I want to say God bless each and every one of you, ladies. You make a difference. Thank you. You make a difference. Have a happy Thanksgiving, a blessed Thanksgiving. Lisa, stop talking about pork. That ain't none of your business. Uh (laughs) Enjoy your Thanksgiving, but I mean, I just want you to- I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm (laughs) kidding. Look, the Dr. Don has an issue. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. I gave up meat a while ago, but that don't mean I stopped eating everything else, y'all. I got to get it together. But sometimes I'll just smell meat and want to eat, but- but but I can't go back to eating meat because I have not eaten meat so long that I'll get sick if I eat it. That's, but but that's another topic for another time. I might need to get that health and fitness person out. Anyway, I want to say have a blessed Thanksgiving to each and every one of you. Thank you for watching on Facebook Live. God bless you, ladies, and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having me.